Hey, hey, what's up, social media family? I hope everybody is having an absolute amazing day. I have a word from the Lord that is going to encourage you. It is going to bring your soul strength, and it is going to cause you to keep moving forward and pressing into the things of God. So recently in one of our corporate prayer times, I was praying, and I just heard this word so strong in my spirit from the Lord. The enemy has been disarmed. Okay, so I heard that. Boy, it just brought a lot of joy because I don't know about you, but I feel like I've been in warfare for three straight years. I feel like I've been in a warfare season for three straight years, okay? About two weeks ago, I woke up one morning and I woke up in total peace. I haven't woke up in that much peace in over three years. That's been about two weeks ago, and I've been waking up. This morning when I woke up, I felt better than I have felt in years. I had, my mind was, there was an anointing. The presence of God was so strong in our house. I know there was huge angelic activity in our house. I just felt the presence of God. Everybody in my house is just overflowing with the joy of the Lord right now. Our minds are clear, okay? So the word I had, was uh, the enemy's been disarmed. The next morning I woke up after I got that word at 4 a.m. and I got up and I started praying at about 5.30. One of my intercessors texted me and said, hey, I know you're up praying. <laughs> intercessors, they know. And they said, I heard the Lord say, the enemy has been declawed. I said, hey, I got the enemies, you know, been disarmed, you know, same thing. And so we, we got on the phone, we talked a little bit and they were like, the way that we feel is unbelievable right now. And my intercessor said, I've been in warfare for three straight years. I said, me too. And they said, it broke. It's broke. Um, and so since then, things have just started shifting, okay? The problem with a lot of people is they've been in warfare for so long, they've built their life around it. Not anymore. It's not there. It's not there, Okay. Let's get into some scriptures. You're going to build freely in this season, okay? You're going to build freely. Colossians 2.15, And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. And I want you to know, everything that the enemy has brought up against you, God has brought the victory over it by the cross. By the cross, Jesus, I say my Jesus, my Jesus by the cross has triumphed over everything, everything. Colossians 1.16, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authority, all things were created through him and for him, okay? Now I want you to understand, like, like I say, when I was young, I had a problem uh, as I was getting older reading and I would look at the words and it was like, I just really couldn't make out the, the letters and the words. So I got some glasses and that helped a little bit. And they said, oh, you might be dyslexic. I'm like, no, I'm not dyslexic. But it just, it, it just things could not make, just make sense. So I was young, I was praying and one day it just broke to the point to where my teachers would say, Jojo, can you slow down reading? Jojo, can you slow down when you read publicly? And I'm like, I can't because years I fought this. And when it broke, it broke. I remember uh, I was scared to speak in public. I wouldn't get behind a camera. Um, I had a, a, a little bit of a stutter. I had a slur to my voice, so I wouldn't speak publicly. And then I remember one day that broke. Well, why would the enemy fight my eyesight? Why would the enemy fight my public speech or my fear of getting in front of people? because that was what I was called to do. See, a lot of times what you are called to do is hidden behind what you call a fear or an insecurity. Do you know why I like pointing out people's abilities and talents? Because I had some people come around me and say, Joe, man, I think you're called to preach. And, and I would be like, man, I don't know about that, you know, and I would talk about why I didn't want to do it. And they were like, no, nah, you're called to preach. You're called to speak. There's an anointing on you. The anointing does not lie, okay? Let's go uh, to Deuteronomy 28.7. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated 
right before you. Your enemies will be defeated right before you. Stay humble in your victory. Stay humble. I love when professional athletes, when they win the big game, when they get interviewed, and they start off by saying, first and foremost, I want to give God all the glory. I love that, okay? When they defeat the opponent, they give God the glory. I love, I love in Deuteronomy 28.7, the second part, it says, They shall come out against you in one way and flee in seven ways. Your enemy will be scattered in this season. Luke 10.19, Behold, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Listen to me. Nothing shall hurt you. You're good. You got this. Nothing's going to hurt you. Psalms 138.7, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. The enemy has been disarmed in your life. Your prayers have, first of all, been heard. Second of all, they have been answered. This is the season of victory. Now, here's where a lot of people struggle. They've been in a warfare season for so long that they don't know how to walk in victory. I remember uh, I used to drive by this house it was this trailer house that had this, 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 this dog in the back. It's a pit bull, and a beautiful pit. Uh, and uh, this dog was on a big chain. I mean, like, well, a huge chain. When it was a little puppy, it was on this huge chain. And one day I, I drove by, and I, pretty dogs, so I'd always look at the dog, and I noticed it wasn't a chain. I drove by a week or so later, and I looked over, and that dog was in that same spot in the backyard, but there was no chain. So I rolled my window down. I asked the owner, I said, hey, how you doing? Sorry, it's all great. How are you doing? So good. I said, I love your dog. And uh, he said, hey, he's a good dog. I said, he's been there for years, but there's no chain. He said, no. About the first five years of his life, I had him on a chain. The last year, took the chain off, and he doesn't go out of the perimeter of where the chain was. Because he'd been chained for five years, I took the chain off, but he will not go past the length of where that chain used to be. He said, but he's free to move around. That's how a lot of people are. They still want to stay shackled and chained to their past, to the past warfare. See, the warfare you went through was for a season. It's not committed to you to a lifetime. It's been broken. The enemy's been disarmed. Now it's time that you move freely with the things of the Lord. So I just declare over you today, in Jesus' name, that you need to move in freedom. In the name of Jesus, amen.